So today we're diving into a crucial topic, negotiating win-win product licensing deals with great brands. Hi, Lisa Lloyd here with more tips, tricks, and strategies to optimize and accelerate your invention licensing success. YouTube is an awesome free way to learn, folks, and you can support me making more free videos like this one when you like, subscribe, and comment below. First though, let's get on the same page about product licensing and what it is. Essentially, when you allow a company to make and sell your product, and you do that in exchange for royalties, that happens with a licensing agreement. It's a win-win because you get to focus on what you love doing most, that front-end innovation and inventing products, while the brand handles all of that manufacturing and the marketing and the distribution and all that other back office stuff. I have a few videos on finding the right companies and presenting to them uh, that I will leave links below for you so you can catch up more if you're not sure who you're speaking with. But I hope that you are already doing research on companies that you are pitching your product to. That research will not only prepare you for the pitch, it will also set you up for negotiating that win-win deal when you have a grasp on what that company sells and how they claim to be better than all of their competitors. So it's important to do your homework, not just for presenting, but also prepping for negotiation. You will understand their product lines, their market presence, and even have an awareness of their company culture, potentially, right? That could be very useful. The more that you know, the better that you'll be able to tailor your negotiations to align, just, you know, line right up and align with their goals. So get under the hood and take some notes on number one, the company's background, their entire product lines, their market share, and then go to their about page and see what else you can find out, like maybe even their company culture. Remember, you will be negotiating after doing your compelling presentation of your product and hopefully you've highlighted all of the unique features and their benefits and the market potential. When you show them how your product aligns with their brand based on that research during the presentation, right? You are already laying a strong foundation of value for negotiating later when and if they are interested. So prepare well to tee up your success. Next, you also need to keep in mind that negotiations aren't just about getting the deal. They're about building relationships. Building a rapport with a potential licensee is crucial. Find common ground and establish a connection. People are more likely to do business with someone that they like and trust, right? I know I am. If you've ever studied any of the sales training, for example, from icons like Zig Ziglar or Tom Hopkins, then you already know you must first be genuine and personable. Don't posture when you're negotiating. Don't try to be someone else. Be your most authentic self. People will relate to you more and even want to help you when you struggle as long as you're being honest. Then find common interests as it relates to what they do. So for example, if you're talking to a vice president of marketing, tell them how they must have the greatest job in the world and how envious you are that they get to look at new products all day, every day. You could also build a rapport by showing appreciation for their work. Be respectful of their time and let them know how much you appreciate the role that they're in and the responsibilities that they must have. Building rapport is valuable whether you get a deal or not. That relationship could very well turn into many more deals in the future. Now, when negotiating, you must listen more than you speak. <laughs> and I know this can be hard, especially if you're like me and you talk more when you get nervous, but you need to understand what the brand needs and how your product fits into their strategy. So ask open-ended questions to uncover what their priorities and their concerns are. For example, you could ask, what are your current product challenges? Or what's hot or trending? How do you see my product fitting into your lineup? What would your primary goals for this product be? Open-ended questions give you an opportunity to learn with deeper or richer answers because they unpack the answer as opposed to just asking a yes or no question or just telling them what you want, right? Makes sense. If it doesn't, please leave comment a question or a comment below. I'll dial it in more for you, I promise. 
It's also more conversational and it continues to build mutual respect when they believe you really want to help them, not just sell them, right? Now, when it comes to actually negotiating the terms, aim for a win-win outcome. Be clear about the expectations and flexible where you can be. Discuss the key points such as royalty rates, payment terms, and the duration of the agreement. Royalty rates for most consumer products range from 3 to 5% on average. I've seen them as low as 1% and even as high as 10%, but those are very unique circumstances. On the lower end, they better have a good reason for you to be able to accept that. On the higher end, they just need to be able to justify it financially and to be fiscally responsible. The terms of the contract can also vary. Some companies will want to do a short-term agreement, like a few years, with the option to renew, but most larger companies will want to do it for the entire term of your patent. They may choose to license exclusively or on a non-exclusive basis, but most of the time they will want an exclusive. Let's face it, the competitive advantage that you're offering them on an exclusive basis just makes more sense. Now, exclusive agreements typically come with a minimum payment guarantee. After all, they are asking you not to let any of their competitors have it. So, you need to have some sort of a guarantee in place that you will get paid enough to offer it to them exclusively. Now, one last thing that you can ask for with an exclusive agreement is an advance. If they agree this is a fixed amount of money to be paid to you within a week or so of signing the agreement. These are not as common, but I have been able to do this on every single invention, so it's definitely possible. All of these terms are open to negotiation and should be thoroughly discussed. If you are not satisfied with their offer, but you understand their perspective because of that dialogue, then you can either present a well-reasoned case for terms that you prefer, or you can accept their offer because it just makes sense in light of the facts or whatever data they have given you. So that's why it's called a negotiation. It's not just a transactional deal. Without a healthy and respectful conversation, you won't know what is important to them. And you'll be unable to strike terms that are meaningful for both you and the company. Now my last tip for you is on hiring attorneys. I'm often asked by inventors if their patent attorney can do all of this for them. Well, as long as you hire an attorney with specific experience negotiating licensing deals in consumer products, it's fine. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. A good attorney will do everything they can to insulate you and protect you from lawsuits, for example. And in telling you all the things that could go wrong, it can very quickly blow up a deal. I've seen this happen too many times. Well, I've licensed all eight of my products without an attorney and helped thousands more do it themselves over the last 30 years. So it's worth learning how to effectively communicate in the negotiation process and then seal the deal on your own. Now, what you could do is go through all of the negotiations on your own and then show that agreement to a contract attorney, for example, to make sure that you understand all the terms and conditions, the language and the implications of that language, and then go back to the company if you have any concerns after that. Now, negotiating a licensing deal can be challenging, but with the right preparation and approach, you can strike a winning agreement for both you and the brand, not to mention a long-term relationship with them for many more deals in the future. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tips on bringing your inventions to life or drop your questions below. I read and answer everyone and we'll get back to you if you have any questions. Dare to dream and imagine what's possible when powered by innovation.